All right, folks, welcome back. This is episode number 10 of the 2022 ICT Mentorship for the YouTube channel. This lecture is going to be teaching implementing economic calendar events with the open. All right, so the economic calendar, many of you probably don't even consider looking at this, but it's important if you're going to be learning how to speculate, study these markets. Certainly, if you're ever going to consider putting live funds in them, <laughs> you really want to know what this calendar says for the day you're going to be trading. Otherwise, you could be surprised, unfortunately, adversely, with a sudden rush of volatility that you wouldn't otherwise expect. This is Thursday's economic calendar for Thursday, February 17th. And not all of these things are going to be heavy hitters for stock indices, but most of them are. And what I'm showing here is what I teach all my students. I go to forexfactory.com. I use their economic calendar. It's not the only one you can use. It's whatever you like. I like the color scheme they use. It's just a personal preference. You can pick any economic calendar. They're all going to pretty much say the same thing. Here, the medium impact events are like orange. Low impact are yellow. And anything that's red, which is not being shown here, would be like a high impact news driver. So when we look at these stock indices, the reason why I teach you 8.30 in the morning, like that's your beginning time to start looking at it or crosshairs time, the news embargo lifts at this time at 8.30. Typically, there's a bunch of news events that are being ushered into the marketplace at that time. Now, some of these reports or speeches or data points, they may be used as a smokescreen. They may be used as a catalyst to have price go up or down at the time of their release. Other instances, like I'm going to teach tonight, usually there's going to be a build up or a dropping down in price right before the report comes out. And then the real move starts to ensue. Okay, so it'll make more sense as I get into the actual teachings. Okay, so we're looking at the NASDAQ daily chart. This is the trading view continuous charts. So that way you'll know what I'm looking at here. It's the one we've been working with in this mentorship. So the daily chart, when I'm talking about power three, a lot of comments came in the previous video mentioning how it was confusing to them because obviously they're, they're new. They just found me. They don't know what I'm talking about when I say power three. I actually have a teaching in the YouTube channel so you can look it up and study it but I'll give you a little bit more amplification here also kind of like help bridge the gaps in your understanding about daily bias because if I could tell you what was the most requested question <laughs> over the years since I've been mentoring people without a doubt absolutely without a doubt the number one question I get is ICT can you please teach me the daily bias can you tell me if it's going to be an up day or a down day? And I'm going to teach you here. And this is my honest to God's truth. Okay. I'm never going to be able to do it any easier than this. Okay. You just have to study price action and you'll see it for yourself after a while. But this is really all I teach my students. And it is nothing more secret to it. It's, it this is it. Okay. It's just the brass tacks of looking at what the daily range is likely to form. So right away, we're looking at the daily chart. And as I mentioned in the previous episode, I outlined this high here and this low, and that was the range we were within. And then the 50 level was equilibrium. So again, above equilibrium is what? A premium market. And below 50% is a discount market. So we traded back up into the top end of the range between this low and this high, and between these two levels here. Remember, I gave you this low and this high. That's a imbalance. Okay, it's a fair value gap. This market was down in a discount initially after we had the indecisive candle. Go back and watch the ninth episode. If you haven't watched that one yet and you're watching this one, it's going to feel like even more confusion. But we had an indecisive candle here and we were in a discount. Even though I believe, and I've been telling my own students that I believe we're going to clean out these lows down here, we went to a discount relative to the dealing range between this high and that low. 
So below it, we're at discount, and we have an imbalance. So it's likely to do what? Go back up and rebalance this before going back down. Listen to what I said in the episode number nine. I said, even if we trade back up into this range, there's trades you can take even if we believe that it's going to go below those lows. That's me tipping my hand to you. I'm not trying to provide you signals. I'm not going to tell you buy here, sell here, put your stop here, take your I'm not. I'm not doing that. In the community tab on my YouTube channel, probably once a week, I'm going to point out something in the chart right before it happens. And I want you to try to study it. You may not be able to see it real time. You may miss it, come to the YouTube channel after work or whatever. Maybe you're sleeping and you couldn't see it at the time but still go through your charts using the information I'm providing you. I get asked all the time, can you please put a date and time reference in the post? I forget. I, I try to remember doing it when I wake up if I'm going to post anything, but something happens and I see it in the chart and I heard must want to put everything in the post and I, I forgot it. So I apologize for that. It's a work in progress, folks. <laughs> so if we look at the reference points of it being in a premium market or a discount market, but then we have this imbalance and we have a bias that, and it's likely to go down and take out these lows. So what do we said here in short? The market's been going lower. Yes, we took out some sell stops below this low with the sell side liquidity being taken out here. Then a natural retracement, which is reasonable. Then we start to the decline. Then we come back up one more time. Failure swing doesn't go above that high. And it breaks down and it creates an imbalance when it takes out this short-term low. Wow. That's kind of like the model I'm teaching you. Yes. Now, what's the framework here? We rallied, broke below a short-term low with the model suggesting that these lows may be taken out. So any rally or up-close candle or candles should be viewed as a potential shorting candidate. Now, ring in the imbalance. We traded up into the imbalance one more day. We swept above it, not by much. Then, the next day, we open, we rally just a little bit, and then plunge. We took out the previous day's low and the day before it's low. So both of these daily lows have been cleaned out. Now, this one is the next one. Then, down here. So, when I talk about power three, I'm specifically dealing with this time frame, the daily chart. If you consider where the market opens, say this is the opening price, in the daily range, if you're expecting it to go down, or maybe you weren't expecting it to go down, you were just looking at the price in your chart, and you see that the opening was here, it rallied a little bit, and it went down, and then closed near the low. Now, that's a rather simplistic overview, just making it very plain, nothing terribly exciting about that. But when you really start to consider it, it is really exciting because this is the market right here. If you understand this and you can study a daily chart, daily bias will become easier for you if you start implementing it with this mindset. So if we're bearish, okay, if we're bearish on a market, we're going to anticipate the daily ranges or each one of these candles doing this very thing here. Open, a rally, not much of a rally, but it can make a large wick. It doesn't make a difference. But the general premise is it goes up just to go down and it closes down near its low when it's bearish. Obviously, this would be reverse where the open would be down here near the low and the close would be near the high of the daily candle if it's bullish. But not every single candle in a series of the entire price swing is going to be all up close candles when you're bullish. Conversely, not every candle is going to be a down close candle when you're bearish. But I've already taught you when you have these sustained price swings on the higher time frame, you're not seeing a lot of up close candles when it's bearish. And you're not seeing a lot of down close candles when it's bullish. But contrast that with what you may be feeling when you're looking at price you'll make a big deal out of one down day when you've been bullish and it completely takes you out of your game. Oh, I can't determine bias. I don't know what's going on. 
This is always tricking me. <laughs> I felt that too in the 90s. I know what it feels like. But let's take a closer look at this. This is the chart that I used to trade back in 1992. The classic open, high, low, and close bar, which is what I'm showing you here. Now, with this chart, it made perfect sense to me. And if my eyes were not as poor as they are now, because I'm, I'm aging and I've been looking at computer screens for 30 plus years now, it's worn them down. So obviously candlesticks are a much more preferred way of looking at it because it's thicker. You can see the, the open and close relationship as I'm teaching you here a lot easier versus this. You have to strain <laughs> to see where the opening is on this candle is to the left of the can or not. It's not even a candle. It's a bar. So to the left of the bar is the open. It trades down, creates the low, rallies up and closes near the high. You see that? Same thing here. It opens, trades down goes up and closes above the opening, but in the upper portion of the daily range. Then we have a high where it doesn't really matter where it closes. And then it's likely to do what? Come back and rebalance this. It'll make sense in a moment. And it opens here, small little rally up, creates this very thing here on this day. It opens, small little rally up, and then down, overlapping this daily bar. If we look at this relationship over here, we have this one single pass with that bar range between this candle's low and this candle's high. That's our fair value gap. The market can trade back up into it and look where it closes, right on the highs. In the next candle, it's back and forth, works both sides of the range. But what is our bias? What's our hint at? The bias is bearish. We're looking for these lows to be taken out. So the only thing we were doing was coming back up to rebalance this, then go lower. So once we went back to the top of the range, did this candle or bar touch this candle's or bar's low? No. Just fell short of it. This wiped back and forth. So now this range here is completely balanced. So there's no reason for this price to hang around. Now, it could have went a little bit higher today, and I was waiting for that to potentially happen, but I've not abandoned my bearishness for price to go down here. All my students know that. This movement here, we have the open, the rally up, fade it, comes back down and closes on the low. That's this pattern right here. Power three is accumulation, manipulation, distribution. Okay, that's the three components. The power aspect is... If you understand those relationships on what the daily range is doing, the open on a day that's bearish, okay? The open and anything above it, that is accumulation of shorts. Now, it's not limited to just open and above. That's the that's where smart money and people like myself and my students, that's where we're aiming to enter getting short. It can be whatever the range is. This is important because my students are actually going to smile when they get this too. The open to the high, whatever that range is, you take that range and you subtract it from the opening price. That is your opening range. That's where your fair value gaps. That's where your stop raids are going to happen. That's where your optimal trade entry is going to happen. Every potential shorting candidate, whatever system approach that I teach, even in my paid mentorship, every premium array, okay, that's what I teach it as. Every single one of them will reside and form in the range between the open and its high. In other words, if you're watching price and you're bearish, the day opens up and then it rallies up. That's a Judah swing. The range from the opening price up to that high, that range is what you project below the opening price. That is your opening range. When I say opening range, that's opening range. So what that does is gives me a an area at which to bracket out how much leeway I can give the market when it starts to go below the opening price and still take a favorable entry because power three is I'm bearish. I'm expecting the market to open and rally above. If I can get something on short there, that's the ideal scenario, but I may not be able to do it or I may take a trade early or just take a trade and I get stopped out. It's going to happen. But then it breaks down below the opening price. Does that completely ruin the day for me? Sometimes it'll just tear off and I can't catch it. It doesn't give me a setup. 
and not just miss it. And you can't chase it and don't worry about it. But don't be upset. Go back in your back testing and you'll see that there's lots of opportunities coming in just below the opening price. This is called close proximity entries. This is what I promised in this mentorship on YouTube. Teaching you in the mentorship community, I already know most of you that have recently found me, and there's been a lot of you that just came on, and I appreciate all of you joining me, but you don't know all the things that I've been teaching on this YouTube channel. So you feel like you're drinking from a fire hose right now, and it can feel like it's tearing your face off because it's so much information all at one time, and it leaves your head spinning. Like, this guy keeps talking. I don't understand. Get to the point. The point is, is you need to have layered understanding. And if you're not going to be patient and go through the content properly, I'm not going to help you. I'm going to frustrate you. And you'll probably come back to me later on and then learn properly and wish you would have stayed and did it the right way the first time. But that's for you to determine on your own. Having the opening range, when you're bearish, whatever the high is from the opening, project that down. Your sell setups are going to form in that. That is accumulation of shorts. The manipulation is the initial rally up. That's the sucker play. That's typically the breakout artist thinking, oh, it's going to go higher. No. It only goes up just to go down. That, that's a fake run. Then it goes lower, creates the low of the day, and then closes near the low of the day. So between where the low of the day is and where it closes, that's distribution. What's being distributed? Smart money's short positions. So they're selling at the open and above or just below it riding out the daily range when it creates the low of the day how do you know when the low of the day is formed well i've taught you time references so if price has been really taking a a, a beating going lower and you're getting towards the end of the day like 3 30 you know 3 45 something like that it's probably really close to the low not all the time sometimes it creates a real fast sudden continuation and if you're not expecting it or if you're offside it can be bad but if it's one side it's really fun to be a part of that but generally, it's the last portion of the trading day, and it'll create some kind of a low. And then wherever it closes, between that low and where it closes, that's where the distribution cycle is occurring. That part is not that important. The main thing is understanding what does this candle have the highest probability in terms of forming? An open rally sell off and close down on its low? Or is it likely to create an opening trade lower first, then rally and close near the highs? Take the, let's take the close out, okay? I don't want you thinking that you have to know or be able to predict the closing price. That's more advanced. You don't even need that to be profitable. You just need to know, is this daily range more likely to expand higher or lower than the opening price? That's it. That's all you have to do. That's the key to bias. Now, how do you know what the bias is going to be most likely? Not everyday bias. Most likely. What's the bias going to be? Well, let's go back to this low over here. It creates a swing low. That means a low with a higher low to the right of it and a higher low to the left of it. So it's three candles that make up a swing low. You do not need a Williams fractal. That's way too many candles and you've missed the move. Okay. <laughs> you don't need that. No disrespect to the gentleman, but that's nonsense. You don't need that. Okay. You only need three candles. Once you get a swing low or a swing high and you have the proper context and you know what you're looking for, that's it. You go in and you start hunting it. Now watch what happens. We have a swing low form. The very next candle, we have an opening. It trades way down and then comes back up and closes right near the highs. Is that the opposite of this candle? Yeah, but it's got a whole lot of movement below the opening price. So something just took place down here after this swing low was formed. Did this candle or bar go lower than that one? No. I promise I'm going to switch the candles, but I just want to show you from this perspective, because this is what we were forced to learn on <laughs> back in the old days, okay, back in the dinosaur time. So the rallying up on this candle here and closing on the high, that supports this as a swing low because it didn't take out the lower low right here in the middle between this low and this low. This is the lowest low of the three candles or price bars. The next day, we have a big washout from the opening, trading down, and then it closes on the high. So the next day, we're likely to go what? Into this area here. Isn't that a fair value gap? Sure it is. What's the daily bias likely to be? 
bullish. So that means it's going to do the opposite of this. It's going to open near the low and then rally and expand higher. Will it close on the high? I don't know. It could, but I don't need it to. I only need it to open and start to rally and get up in this area here. That's an opportunity. That's a trade. Does it do it? Yes. But now when we trade it up into this area, look what happens. Next day, you might be expecting an open rally, close high. It doesn't give you that. So that could be a day where you missed an opportunity or you took a, a loss. No problem. Next trading day here, what are we seeing? We're seeing the market retrace back down into this run. How far can it go down? Well, look at your high down to your low. Equilibrium, it's probably going to go below equilibrium to do what? To offer the market a discount. The market does what? It goes down below it, provides a discount. Once it gets there, our mind, or we're thinking, it's going to be the opposite of this. It's going to be the open near the low and expand higher. That's power three. It's going to be accumulation of longs at the low and then rally higher. We have it right there. It opens near the low, rally and closes on the high. The next day, same thing, opens on the low, rallies, and closes on the high. Now we've gone deeper into this area here, and in a small little range, but it's still the same function of power three. Accumulation, which is open near the low, trade down, and then close high on the daily range. Next candle, same thing, it opens, trades down, accumulates longs, trades higher. Same thing here, what's this? It opens, trades down, trades higher. Until we do what? We take out this short-term high. See that? Then we can get a retracement lower or consolidation. We get both. Small little retracement and consolidation. Next candle, power three delivering for accumulation of longs. Next candle, consolidation. Might be a day you took a loss. Let's be real. Next candle, what's the bias? What are these over here? They're relative equal highs. They're stops resting above that. That's buy side liquidity. What's it drawing up to? We've already taken out this high. What's well, going to go up to here likely, right? because we've already taken out sell stops below here with this drop and we keep proving it's going higher. So where's it likely to go? Above here. So until we get to that point, we keep thinking the opposite of what we're showing here. An open near the low and close on the high. Power three, accumulation of longs. Distribution of longs at the close. The next day, indecisive candle. Okay, no big deal. Next candle, we open, trade down. Same thing, we're looking for buys. The whole time we're looking for buys in here. You might get stopped out. You might have a losing trade, but you're not abandoning the bullish bias until we get above these highs. Then we have to study it. Does it want to run higher? Once it clears these highs, does it keep showing and want to go higher? Well, we had a nice run here. The next candle here, nice run here. Small little indecisive candle there, but then we go back in the same cycle again. It's expanding and it's accelerating higher. Each day we're looking for longs. Opening near the low, trades below the opening a little bit, and then rallies and closes near the high. That's bias. That's sticking to your bias. And the same thing is done over here on the opposite. We had an imbalance here. And I promise after this, I'll change it to candlesticks. Your eyes are probably going nuts right now. Fair value gap, we trade up into it. So once we trade into it, what are we expecting? The market to do what? Trade back lower. So if we're trading back lower, we're going to be looking for this pattern, open, rally, accumulation of shorts, distribution at the lows. What are you distributing? The short positions they've accumulated above or at the opening price. So in this candle, what do we have? We have the open, it rallies up to go short, and then trades down and closes on the low. Just like this, this here, see that? The next candle, you're expecting the same thing. Does it deliver that? No. You might take a loss that day too. Okay, no big deal. It's likely to go where? Here's where the sell side is now. Each candle, open, rally, close down on the low. Open, rally, close down on the low. Open way back into this one. And then still closes lower than the open, but still nice range down. Same thing here, opens, rallies, sells off. Next candle opens, sells off. Then comes back and overlaps it, and now we have a potential key reversal. Then we have back and forth price action where you can probably get beat up. In balance, it trades up into that, and then we go into that area where we're at now. So let's go to a candlestick, and it's a lot easier to see it this way. But this function of power three is how I teach the bias, and I also teach how to submit to the daily range. You have to learn how to hold to the close. If you're going to just day trade, and you're not really participating in 
the sustained moves that's made available in these daily ranges, like today. I mean, look at this move here. That's nice. Many of you probably took shorts. Maybe, maybe some of you took longs. I got some people putting comments in the previous video saying, you know, I saw a pair of value gap at this price at this time for a bullish. It's not bullish. We're not buying. We're not, our bias is not bullish. It's bearish. It's already traded to the top end of that fair value gap. And it's likely to go lower now, taking out this sell side and attacking the sell side over here. Okay. All right, let's drop down to an hourly chart. And that fair value gap, the high and the low levels, that's what's being shown here, right there. And these annotations are obviously from what you saw on the episode nine. So watch what happens. The market trades down, finds some support at the low end of the fair value gap, then rallies back up to the high end of the fair value gap, and then breaks right before midnight on the 17th. And then we consolidate, trade back up into what? What is this? What's this right here? It's a fair value gap. Price goes up, rebalances that there, and it's doing it what time of day? Not New York. It's overnight. European London session. That's just how you can use that model. The same model, you can use it in an Asian session. You ain't going to get a lot of movement because it's typically not a lot of movement in that time of day. But you can trade it in London close. You can trade it in, obviously, the New York open like I'm teaching you, and London open. London open, if you know what you're doing with the daily bias, you can catch enormous moves. Enormous moves. But sometimes you're going to have to weigh out a lot of give and take back and forth, kind of like today, where the market rebalanced here and then consolidated and waited for a little bit of a push higher. Then the news came out. Okay, so I'm kind of hopefully clear that up for you now. All right, 15 minute time frame. I'm going to take a look at this imbalance here. We rode up into that, rebalancing all this movement down. Remember that paint roller analogy I gave you? The paint was applied to the wall going down, but it all this movement was given to that one single candle. There's going to be little porous places in prices between the high and the low where the market wasn't efficiently offered for buyers. There wasn't much time and back and forth pricing to give buyers an opportunity to get in there and participate. So an efficient market will see the market go back up and reprice that. So it's down and then right back up like paint being applied to a roller on a wall. You want to make sure you go back and forth to the deposit the paint evenly. So there's an even distribution. So again, the background of this chart, that's the wall. And every one of these candles is a paint roller. And whenever you see these big, long, drawn out candles, there's a strong tendency, not all the time, but there's a strong tendency for the price to go right back up and overlap over that, side, that entire range. Same thing over here. We have the market drop down, creates a fair value gap here. Doesn't it take out some lows over here? Yes, there's displacement. And then you can have an order to get in short here. But then watch what happens. This little pump up. That might be scary. It could have stopped you out if it went higher. That's the risk in this, folks. I'm not going to give you a silver bullet that removes losing trades. <laughs> I lose trades too. You're going to miss moves. I miss moves. Okay. You're going to read it wrong. I read it wrong sometimes. Okay. I'm not perfect, but I'm giving you tools and processes to help you determine where the most likely scenario is going to be. And then you just work those statistical odds and hopefully with sound money management, which I'll cover, which will hopefully get you to the winner circle more often than not. All right. So we have the morning session starting before 830. We have a rally up and then it breaks lower. In this area here, we're going to, have to drop down to a lower time frame. But before I do, I want to give you a little bit more details. Think about what I've taught you so far in this teaching for Power 3. The accumulation, manipulation, and distribution cycle of the daily range, if we are trading near the high end of that fair value gap on the daily chart, that's what that level is, okay? When we just drop down to a lower time frame chart. So with this 15 minute time frame chart, and I apologize, the chart's a little bit shifted. It's still the same chart. I just added the annotations. The idea is we're expecting this power three formation where it's open, rally, create the high of the day, 
sell off and close near the low. That's what we're looking for. Why would that bias be expected on this day? Because we worked the upper end of that fair value gap on the daily chart. Then we had multiple shifts in market structure bearishly. When we already have a bearish bias on the daily chart anyway. So it gives you a high probability that this day is going to be a down close day. It may not close on the low. It might just be a big down move. And that's all you need. You just need movement. So this level here, it's dashed. That's the midnight New York opening price. This is what I'm referring to when I'm looking at the opening or power three on a daily chart. That price right there at midnight. Look what's occurring. That right there is equivalent to this little tick on this diagram here. It opens. It trades above the opening, just like that candle does on a daily chart. It opens and goes higher. You want to be selling short here. Why would you want to go short here? Well, it went back up in there and re-delivered the down stroke on that paintbrush or, or roller on the wall. Well, now it's going back up. When it's going up like that, it feels unnatural to go short. Like you don't want to sell short. It's like this thing's going up. Why would I want to go in there and go short? That's the benefit of studying old data and then reading price, studying it real time. And without taking any demo trades, without trying to pick the, you know, the targets, forget all that. You want to practice for months reading the tape, studying price action, watching it. Even if you have to watch it with trading views, market replay function, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. If that's all you have, and you can't watch it live. But it is altogether something different and much more beneficial if you can watch the actual live data. So as I mentioned in my own paid mentorship, I always counsel my students to, if they have the means to do so, invest in like, like I have Camtasia. Camtasia is what I use to make these videos. It's through TechSmith and TechSmith, and you can Google them. It's pretty inexpensive. It's an easy platform to use. And I have had, had wonderful results with it. I don't have any complaints. I've done all the upgrades every time they have it. It's just really good. If you have a job or if you have a business that you're running or if you go to school or if you just got to sleep, if, if the time zones don't line up for you, you can set up a recording and just let it record for eight hours. It'll do it. And as long as you have space in your computer, it'll do it. And then you can go back and literally play that time real time and watch the candles paint. Unlike trading views replay function where it doesn't give you the ebb and flow of the candlesticks forming. It's just basically the opening and then a closing of what the candle did. It's kind of clunky and wooden. It doesn't really give you that uh, organic feel of the candlesticks actually forming real time. Whereas if you recorded your screen doing it, then there it is. Don't worry about your screen burn in time either. Uh, Camtasia will record the screen. If your screen protector comes on and it like goes blank, it'll still record the screen. All right, so. We're looking at the opening price here, and then we're expecting a sell to form. Well, here's that fair value gap. It rallies up into that. Isn't that a sell above the opening price? Yep. Mm -hmm. Sure is. From that opening price to that high, that's the highest high. Take that range and subtract it from the opening price. That's about in this vicinity here, okay, right in there. So what's occurring? Well, we have this sell here. Then we have this sell here at the open at the equities opening and then we have this imbalance in here so from this range high to that low multiply that by two as a projection in other words whatever that low is to that high that much lower you'll expect to see a short and it forms right here that's exactly what I taught you I did not cherry pick that folks you can go back and look at data as long as you can find data on daily charts okay and if you can get a intraday chart like an hourly chart you'll see it it's there but this is a 15 minute time frame that's my bellwether chart that's what I teach all my students this is the one you go to for day trades and or scalps you can find everything for intraday trading on a 15 minute time frame if I was held to a decision of what time frame would you be forced to trade with if you had to pick just one ICT the 15 minute time frame because I can, I can do anything with that 15 minute time frame. I can swing trade. I can short term trade. I can day trade. I can scalp. But you only need to have one discipline, one way of doing it. And you might not like the 15 minute time frame. 
You might like the one minute chart if you're trading indices. But you have to have the storyline of the 15 minute time frame to get the full panoramic view of what price is likely to do. So with this continued teaching here, right below here, what's that? That's sell side liquidity, relative equal lows. So you can test this on your own chart. I omitted it by mistake, uh, I apologize, but the low on this candle here is 14,381 even. Okay, don't take my word for it. Go look at your own chart, it's there. So 14,381. I would have preferred to include a line projecting that out in time because you'll see in a moment when we drop down to the lower time frame. But the setups are forming here above the opening price, right here near the opening price, see that? And inside of the range from the high to the opening projected down, it's in that vicinity there. So it's giving you another opportunity. So again, what's occurred is we went up into that fair value gap on the daily chart. We're back on the daily chart again. And we're anticipating the opening and rallying up into what? Maybe the high end of that fair value gap or something forming at the news release at 8.30. But if we look at price, price was starting to pump up higher ahead of the 8.30 news release. So what's that tipping its hand to you, telling you? They're pricing in a premium market ahead of the news. So they're going to use the news to sink it lower because the bearish bias is going to come into fruition. They're going to expand price lower and they've already established their shorts because they accumulated above the opening price. And we can see that in the price action of each little short-term rally up, like we're looking at here. So here's seven o'clock in the morning. It rallies above these relative equal highs and cleans up the imbalance here. And look at that right there. See that? Remember what I told you, if there's two fair value gaps, try to trade it in here, but anticipate and use the money management to allow for your stock to weather a run up into that. And we got it right there. Now, strip it down to what I taught you for the structure of the trade or the framework. Swing high, broken to the upside, taking out buy stops. So buy side liquidity is taken. Then we have a swing low. It's broken. Did these candles come down lethargically? Was it like a slow meander decline? No. It was sudden. It was a lot of momentum. It was energetic. You can't miss those down close candles right there. That's obvious. They stand out, right? So that's how you know you have a shift in market structure. In this area here, it doesn't have a fair value gap. That's okay, this is only a five minute chart. This is where we start doing a top down strip of five minute, four minute, three minute, two minute, one minute. The first fair value gap we come to, if we find one on a four minute, you don't need to go down to a three. You don't need to go down to a two. You don't need to go down to a one. If you go down to a four, you don't see one, you go down to a three. If you find one there, you don't go any lower. Okay? If you don't find one on the five, the four, or the three, and you go down to the two minute, and you find it there, that's it. You don't go down to the one minute. If you don't find it on the two minute, and you do find it on the one minute, then there, that's how you trade it. But what if you don't have one on the one minute chart? You don't have a trade. How's that for logic? <laughs> so we have the continuation lower off of a retracement in here. Now this candle, the high of it here, I wish I would have used a lighter color, but it, this candle's high is right there, okay? It actually goes just above that one right there. Not by much, but it, it does. But we don't need that. We don't need that, watch what happens. Here's the four minute chart. <gasps> Uh-oh, something different on this chart, ain't it? <laughs> We have buy side liquidity here. The candles are a little bit more beefier when we were looking at the previous slide. Look at this one. Look at the candles. They look wonky, don't they? But on this time frame, they become much more prominent, more beefy, much more stout. Like, look at me. I'm here. Take a, take a look at me. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for clean price action where we can see the nice candlestick formations where we're seeing the even distribution of the price going higher or lower, in this case going lower, but we're seeing that little break where there's not an even distribution of price. That's the fair value gap. So we have that run above buy side liquidity after rebalancing over here. 
it goes above it, and it breaks down. So we have an idea, okay, we could potentially see a, sh a, a trade short here. I like this fair value gap, but we also have a little bit of imbalance in here. So I want to trade in here, but my money management has to permit me to weather a run up into this area too. Remember that? That's part of the rules. But in here, we're going a little bit deeper. In my YouTube channel, I teach a breaker pattern. Okay. And that is a high, a low, and a higher high. That's what this pattern is here. And we're seeing that return here. So if I see a breaker like this, yes, I think the market could potentially trade up into here. But I'm going to use the breaker's candle and just above that for my stop. So I'm not going to go way up here or way up in here because my foundation to teaching the ICT breaker is the market's going to mostly stay in the lower half of the breaker candle, which is the down, down close candle right for the big move up higher, taking out a short term high. Trust me, the breaker is taught in the YouTube channel. In other lessons, I'm not going to pour myself over top of lessons and regurgitate things because there's a lot of you that have been training with me for a long time and you don't want to go through that. And the new people that are here, I understand your enthusiasm and you want to know everything like a sponge. I get it and I love it. But trust me when I tell you that is taught in the free lessons in this YouTube channel. OK, just remember, it's a bearish breaker and that pattern is the support structure of why I would not expect it to have a, have a higher stop up here. Okay. So here's the fair value gap range from the low and the high end, but it's specifically this candle's low and this candle's high right there. Extend it out in time. Look what happens. At 8.28, the candle's showing 8.28 here because it's a four minute chart. But once we're trading inside here, all I need to do is trade above this candle's high. I want to be short. I don't want to mess around. It might not give me an opportunity to get in. It might not go higher up into that fair value gap. I want to use the easiest, lowest threshold entry technique to get in to make sure I'm a part of the move. Then I'm going to be aiming for those relative equal lows. That's that one, four, three, eight, one level. 14,381. Remember that relative equal lows? I said, I wish I would have put a line on it. This is the time frame I added the line. <laughs> it's the four minute chart. Now, if you look real close, you can see there's a little tiny little arrow right there and a bunch of them over here. What that is, is TradingView's paper trading module. And I put some short on this today to illustrate what many of you have been asking me in TradingView comment section. A lot of you send me comments through TradingView. And I apologize, I don't get to them a lot because there's a lot of them usually that happen and I just don't get to them, I'm sorry. I'm not purposely trying to ignore you. It's like Telegram. Telegram, people send me messages there too, and I just don't, I don't have time to go through it. Emails, absolutely, I don't have a whole lot of time to get through because everybody wants to write a long story to me, and I appreciate them, but I just can't, I can't sit there all day long and read all that. But the idea of showing what a discount broker margin, what, what could I do with that? Okay, I don't recommend it, but... There are brokers out there that will allow you to trade the mini contract for just a couple thousand dollars and the micro for less than a hundred bucks. And to me, that is absolutely stupid. You're asking to blow the account in these markets. You absolutely can have your hinder parts handed to you in short, sudden fashion. Even me in the last, I don't know, four weeks or so, I've seen moves that came back on my stop so fast. I was like, wow, just the other day, I watched a hundred point run come out of nowhere in a one minute candle. It moved a hundred points in the NASDAQ one minute. That's a lot of movement, man. So if you're looking at that and you're trying to hold, let's say, I don't know, 16 minis or eight minis, and it moves $2,000 against you in one minute, folks, your stop would not have been respected. It was literally way above your stop loss if you were using one, okay? So you would have got stopped out with negative slippage. And let's say you were holding those eight contracts. Well, let's say you got burned for 
50 points in slippage. And you don't think that's possible? Oh, it's there. 50 points, just like this. That's $1,000 times your eight contracts. You just lost $8,000. And you're going to tell me that you can open up an account with, a, I don't know, $10,000, whatever. And you're going to trade multiple minis because the discount broker allows you to. And all of a sudden, you just roasted your account in one trade in some wild little price move that came out of nowhere that you didn't expect. And in one candle, one minute candle, it just smoked your account just like that. There's teachers out there that are promoting the idea that that's a good idea. <laughs> it's not a good idea, folks. $10,000, that's the absolute minimum. And I don't think it should be that. I think it should be a little bit higher than that. I think 15000 is fair for what the NASDAQ is doing right now because just today alone moved 8000 per per one single count contract, over $8,000 in movement for one contract. Now that's you know, top to bottom and likelihood of you being in that move is probably, you know, obviously not likely, but the measure of risk needs to be appreciated and respected. And unfortunately, YouTube makes it available for anybody to come out here and pretend to know what they're doing. And unfortunately, if that person isn't skilled, if they don't really do what they say they do, or, or teach proper risk, or to teach you to respect the level of risk that's required to trade these markets, they're doing you a disservice. And that's the number one reason why I taught for a long time with a demo, and still teach with a demo, because number one, legal reasons, I'm not trying to be held liable, because I'm not licensed to give trade advice, but it's not trade advice in a demo account. You're not making or losing anything. It's fantasy football with price charts. But you can learn how to read price action with it. This year, I've been showing you a live account. That's real. I'm not teaching through that. Notice that? Okay. At the end of the year, I'm going to share with you what that account has done. I'll be 100% transparent. I will show you line by line every single trade from every single trading day of every single trading week of every month. You'll see it. Okay. Throughout the year, I'm going to be teaching lessons about certain things, and you're going to see them applied when I share the entire history with that account. So it's more meaningful because there's a lot of you in the comment sections that are trolling. And I, I know what you're here for, but I'm going to give you undeniable proof, just like the rest of you. That way you can see the lessons I'm giving you. Yes, they worked in demo, but they're actually being utilized in live fund trading by me. It's after the fact, so I cannot be accused of giving you trade advice. It's what I did with my real money. See the difference there? It is what it is. If you don't like this teaching style, there's other people out there teaching all kinds of great stuff. It doesn't mean it's profitable, but they got all kinds of neat stuff to look at. I'm teaching you how to read price, and I need you to be sober-minded about the level of risk that these markets provide us because it can take you out quickly. So I got questioned by, I don't know, six or seven of the people. Some of them are actually my students in the mentorship and others are just people that are on the internet. You know, I don't know if they're just YouTube or if they're just trading view you know, people that try to follow me on there. But they asked, could I showcase what I would do with a $10,000 hypothetical account if I was using a discount broker? In other words, a broker that would let me trade with, I don't know, like $2,000 or $1,500 per contract, something to that effect for a NASDAQ mini contract. Number one, it was crazy trying to find some of those setups because to frame the risk in it and to do big lot sizes too was very challenging. But I kept it low end. It only took me two weeks to do this, but you can see I put a heavy-handed short up here using what I'm teaching you here and then aiming for those relative equal lows which is that 14,381 level. This is my trading view account. Now you're going to hear people say this is photoshopped. Oh you photoshopped this. No I did not. I don't need to photoshop this. In fact my live mentorship with real students that paid me 
They're going to see me show this live and it's going to move all around. It's not edited. I'm going to log out of the account and log back in. So it's not me doing any kind of editing. It's not MT4 servers or anything like that. You can play around with it. It's not Ninja Trader where you can go in there and take a bad trade out and make it look good. All these things here are executions. Okay. And you can see there's three losing trades there on the 14th. And where is. You can see today's trades all up at the top. And that was me doing a heavy handed, a uh, quant style heavy handed short, and then taking partials as it was going down into that level of 14,381. Looking at this, this is your classic, you know, the guy shows you the results, okay, shows you this is what I did with my demo account. And they may lie and say it's a real account. This is clearly a paper trading account. You can see it, it's there, it says it right up here. Paper trading, okay? Paper trading. This is all paper money, okay? I started the account with TradingView at $10,000, okay? And that was on February 3rd, just two weeks ago, to the day, okay? So two Thursdays ago, I started this and set the account to start with $10,000. And I started trading it, and you can see the positions here with just the NASDAQ. Okay, I'm not doing anything with like Forex to make it go up. I'm not trying to pull out bonds. I'm not trying to do anything like that. I'm showing you just the NASDAQ. Starting with $10,000 in two weeks using, again, the limitations of, well, I guess, I, mean, I don't want to say limitations, the pseudo benefit of a discount broker. What could I do? in two weeks doing that and using what I'm teaching you too. That's the difference. I'm literally teaching what I'm showing here. I just showed you the example of it in the chart before. This is the equivalent of 582% in two weeks. Now it's hypothetically done in paper trading, yes, but with the perspective of a hypothetical discount broker margin being used. So, whereas I'm trading with TD Ameritrade right now, and they require me to have almost $22,000 to trade one contract. I don't have a problem with that because of the level of volatility that's in there. It just makes it easy for me not to worry about it. Like, I'm not worried about it. I know I've got plenty of margin. I know I've got plenty of equity. If I get banged by something coming out of nowhere, say Russia goes into Ukraine or China invades Taiwan or something crazy comes out and it causes the market to go nuts because I expect that to be coming anytime now. It won't smoke my account. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blow the account. I guarantee you this account's not blowing. Okay. And I'm showing, in my opinion, what it would be like for someone if they ever got to the point where they put years into developing their own model. Now, that doesn't mean you can't find profitability before that, but after you've done it for a while and you've found your own niche of what you want to do with the content I'm teaching you, you'll find your own groove. And once that's done and you can formulate a well-written model on paper where everything is outlined, when do you buy? When do you sell? Where do you put your stop at? When do you move your stop? How many contracts do you trade? You know, what constitutes a day where you don't take a trade all those types of things I will teach you those lessons in this YouTube mentorship okay a lot of you also are very very excited and you're like okay I, I see you doing this but I'm not really learning anything new I'm disappointed I, I'm not done you give me those complaints after I say I'm done <laughs> okay but I'm giving you gold like this is something that you can go out there and turn in these markets and really develop a skill set that could completely change your whole entire direction in your life. I'm not promising profitability. Notice that? See that? I'm not promising that. I'm not promising you a six-figure income every year. I'm not doing that either. I'm telling you that you will love price action because it repeats. It's something that's, well, it repeats. And if you know something's going to repeat, it's familiar. And things that are familiar are comfortable. Right now, you don't know what these patterns are likely to do. You're, they're unfamiliar to you. So it's it's important for you to understand that that's a temporary struggling point. 
but going through the things I'm going to teach you to do here and I'm streamlining it. Yes, this doesn't feel like streamlining to some of you. You want me to come out here and say, this is where you buy, this is where you sell. You put your stop loss right here and this is where you take your profits. And it's always like this every single time. Wash, rinse, repeat, and it never violates any of those rules. And it's just always the same way. If you think that way, just change this channel right now. Don't even come back here because that's not reality. There's going to be similarities that look slightly different than the last few times you took the trade, but you will recognize them. But my question to you is, if you could do this over a year, not two weeks, would you be impressed with yourself if you could do that? Would you feel that it would be enough? Some of you young guys don't think that this is enough. And it's amazing. That type of return is amazing. If you can tune, if you can turn that with a live account, that's phenomenal. Like that's that's wealth making there. You don't need it to be that high to make money. But if you can hit that kind of number a year, over 12 months, hit something like that, that's amazing. And that's not even what I teach my students to expect. And I'm not this is not bragging. I'm not trying to say, look at me, <laughs> I can trade a demo account. Look at me. That's not what I'm doing here, folks. Okay. I was asked sincerely to show. You all hear me telling you, and I'm showing, I'm showing you, it's a paper trading account. Because I'm not going to go into AMP or some other broker that's going to allow me to trade with discount broker margins. I'm not going to do it. I know, I know, even what I know. I'm going to get smoked if I try to do something crazy and heavy handed because even with me trading one contract, I've had moves come against me pretty sudden and there was nothing I could have done about it because the volatility is so fierce right now. I'm not afraid of it, but I do absolutely respect it. So to provide a answer to the guys out there that say that, yeah, yeah, it's stupid to trade in another account where they use the exchange rate margins for initial margins, which is right now almost $22,000 for the NASDAQ. One mini contract, you need about $22,000. It was about $17,160 about three and a half weeks ago, four weeks ago, but they raised it up. If they raise the margins, listen, this is for your notes, okay? If they raise the margins, that's the exchange tipping their hand to you that huge moves are coming. Big, monstrous moves are coming. And they just raised the margins. You think that's coincidence? It's not. Big moves are coming. And if you're offside, whoo, <laughs> it's going to get real hot in the underpants. But if you're onside, oh man, there ain't nothing sweeter than that. That's like winning the lottery. And these moves are significant. I mean, Let's go back up for a second, okay? And I'll close this video. If you look at the fair value gap in here, okay, and say you're filled at 14,515, and you're aiming for 14,381, is that six and a half points? No. Is it 20? No. Is it 50? Mm -mm. Is it 100? Nope. It's more. Do you see a pattern here? One contract? Folks, what I'm teaching you is literally a ATM machine in your hands. I'm giving you the pin numbers. Every time I do a video here, I'm giving you another digit. And once you figure out what it is that you want to do with this content and make it part of you, and you'll see what I mean by that. Right now, you might see me showing you. And it's like, man, this makes perfect sense. Most of the comments that I don't allow to be posted are just sugar, sweet, diabetic, coma type lovey-dovey comments. And I'm not making fun of that. And I appreciate it. I know what you mean by it. And you want to show your adoration and respect. And I love that. But don't lose sight that you're feeling that splash over because I'm literally taking you into the chart. And showing you what I know. And you're excited because you know the opportunity is 
available to you if you stick to this. And that's the right perspective. But don't lose sight and think that, oh, I just watched that video and I'm going to go out there and trade because I've had some people post in the comment section and they try to do something with live accounts, which I already said, no, don't do that. And they're saying, I, I don't think these concepts work because I tried to do this and I tried to buy this fair value gap today. And you know who you are and I'm not trying to make fun of you. I'm not talking down to you. But the bias is bearish. So if the bias is bearish, would you go in looking for a bullish fair value gap? No. That's that's the purpose of having a model. And then with that model, each morning, before the markets even start trading, you write down what your intentions are. What does that mean? I gave you the range, right? Here's the opening price. It rallies up to that. So inside that range, you're going to look for a setup to go short. You're bearish. And if it goes down below that low, you can still take a short if it's in this range minus this low. Okay. If it leaves that area, you can't chase it. I don't care how good it looks later in the day. You don't do it. You have to have discipline, folks. If you don't have discipline, your broker's not going to help you with that. They want you to click that button. That's how they make money. And they don't care if you blow your account because there's going to be 20 more to replace you. Because they've watched ICT videos. They've watched... <laughs> everybody else on YouTube that try to tell you that you can do this. And it's so easy. Even a pizza delivery boy can do it. So hopefully this has helped clear up the idea of bias and power three. And I will be repeating these themes when it's applicable in the newer videos that come out and examples I'm going to teach with. But for now, I can't say it enough. What you were just exposed to, that is the underpinnings of what we do in my camp, okay, ICT. My students, we look at price like that. Let me throw one more thing in here just to piss off everybody that doesn't like these long videos. <laughs> Let me go back up into this area real quick. And on the daily chart with the candlesticks, that's what I'm looking for here. There we go. All right. Notice something from this low up to this high. It's bullish. OK, we're expecting bullish prices. This is how you backtest. You tell yourself in your annotations. I was expecting you're, you're basically lying to yourself in the, uh, in the comments of your chart when you're backtesting. It sounds foolish. OK, trolls are going to love that comment coming out of my mouth. But what you're doing is, is you're teaching yourself pseudo experience. It's training your subconscious to see this stuff like you saw it live. And when you record it on the chart in your own annotations and you log it and you keep it in your journal. And on the weekend, you go back and look at your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then you look at the previous week. And you start looking at these patterns and how it repeats over and over again. When it's bullish, you're trying to stay with the opposite of this. Open near the low, close near the high, but expansion to the upside. So you accumulate longs. Manipulate, get people thinking it's going to go lower, and then ram it up higher. Distribute the longs near the close. That's what you're looking for here. With that mindset, okay, you're all afraid of, but what happens if it's a down day? ICT, what happens? Well, the worst thing that can happen is you lose money. And if you think that you're going to trade and not ever lose money, <sighs> turn the videos off. Don't ever watch anybody else's either because... That's not a proper mindset. Traders are professional losers. They're managing every trade right from the beginning. They got to come out of the costs. You're paying a commission. And if you got slipped in Forex, you got to spread. Every trade opens up as a loser. So a trader is a professional management company of losing trades. They turn losers into winners. But not every loser can be turned into a winner. But they don't lose their business because a few never become winners. It's real important to understand that, folks. It's a paradigm shift that took place when I was a younger man. I felt that there was a way for me to always win. I was convinced of it. <laughs> there isn't. There is no way of doing that. Okay. So last analogy, last lesson, and the video is over. If we're bullish here, okay, we're expecting each candle to expand higher. So in other words, the close be higher than the opening on each individual candle. My up candles are green. How many black or down close candles do you see in this price run? 
too. Wow. How about this price move here? It's going lower, right? Going down for the sell side here. You're bearish. But what happens, ICT, if it goes up? You'll probably lose money. But let's count how many up close candle we have. One, two, three, four, five. Look how much range it moved. If you can't have a model that weathers, say you got a losing trade each one of those days. If that blows your account, you're not managing your risk properly. You're over leveraging or over trading. See how easy that is to deduce your problems? It's simple stuff, folks, but you're you're scaring yourself. You're overthinking things. You're listening to me talk about multiple concepts that will come together in a few weeks, but you're overthinking everything. And you're trying to assume just because you watched a few videos and you're thinking foolishly that just by watching a few of these videos, we're only in episode 10. 10 episodes. And some of you think you can go out there and own the world now. <laughs> I understand it's empowering information if you've never been introduced to it, but you're not going to own the world up to episode 10. Okay, You're not going to do that. You're going to lose money if you go out there and try to rush to try to do this stuff. There's a lot of things we still have to cover. And you haven't even back tested it enough. I haven't even been teaching it long enough on YouTube for you to even have a backlog of data to draw experience from. So think about that, okay? Trust me when I tell you folks, these moves repeat all the time. All the time. And don't feel like you're missing out because you're not doing it right now. Put that feeling aside. Make this fun while you're learning it and it'll never feel like a job or a tedious task. And that's going to be it for this one. Hopefully it was insightful to you. And until I talk to you next Tuesday, enjoy your weekend and be safe.